Right, Leah Thomas made global headlines when she became the first transgender person to win a national college title at swimming, leading to outrage from the women she defeated. She was ranked 65th when competing as a man. Well, three months after that win, she was banned from competing against biological women, but she's now mounted a legal fight to overturn the ban and has potentially the Paris Olympics in her sights. I'm joined now by the former teammate of Leah Thomas, to stand with women's spokeswoman Paula Scanlon, uh, Outkick's CEO, Clay Travis, and political journalist and defender of the indefensible on these things, Ava Santina. So welcome to all of you. Let me start with you, uh, if I may, Paula. You have competed against Leah Thomas. In your estimation, how unfair is it that Leah Thomas was allowed to compete against biological females and is now trying to seek legal redress to do so, but potentially removing one woman from the women's Olympic team? Yeah, it's incredibly unfair. Um, I think just looking at the situation, Leah Thomas was the tallest person on both the men's and the women's team at the University of Pennsylvania. Just the height difference, the muscle difference, the length in bones, the body shape, um, and also the hormones that males have that women don't. That was obviously a huge factor in Leah being much better than the rest of us. Uh, to put it into perspective, the University of Pennsylvania has never had an NCAA female champion until Leah Thomas came around. And I think that really shows that our program went from hardly ever having anyone qualify for the NCAA championship to having somebody win an event. And you, you didn't actually compete against her, I think. You competed with her, is that right? Yes, I swam different events than Leah, but I was on the same team. Right. I mean, I've just seen, you know, some some of the video clips from some of the races she was in, both when she competed as a man and then as a woman. And the difference is just astounding. I mean, in one race, she was winning by over 50 seconds or something crazy. Yeah, and in that event, actually, the second place finisher was a University of Pennsylvania swimmer that lost to Leah by over two laps in the pool. And if you were a... If you were a member of the women's Olympic team for the United States, a woman, and you lost your place to Leah Thomas now, how do you think you'd feel? I would feel terrible. And in fact, the girls that Leah beat when Leah won the 500-yard freestyle, the second, third, and fourth place finisher were Olympians themselves, some of which having medals. So it already happened, and it would definitely happen in the Olympics. And I think that would be a big scandal because it would affect not just NCAA athletes, but all women from all different countries that compete in the sport of swimming and also in other sports that they allow this to happen in, they'll also be affected as well. Right. Clay Travis, I, I've got a feeling in like 10 years' time, maybe sooner, we're going to look back on this period of, of the existence of planet Earth and think, what the hell were we doing? How was this insanity <laughs> being allowed to happen? And it'll probably culminate in a, you know, a six-foot, six-inch transgender athlete winning the 100 metres women's race at the Olympics by about 50 yards. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I give credit to Paula uh, for speaking out and being willing to point out how ridiculous this is because I do think it's going to take women athletes uh, more so than people like you and me, Piers, who can look at this and talk about how ridiculous it is. But what we're starting to see is, in America at least, uh, when Gallup polls this issue increasingly massive majorities of the American population are saying, this is wrong. And, Pierce, I don't even think you have to focus on sex itself. Uh, obviously, men are bigger, stronger, and, uh, and faster than women as a group. And by the way, that doesn't mean that some women aren't bigger, stronger, and faster than some men, no, which but is it is anecdotally why, it is how just people on that point, it is, it is why we separate the genders just, at the Olympics. I mean, if you made totally. it gender... If you had totally. what is, there the, would what, never be... If you had the woke dream of a gender-neutral Olympics, can you imagine how many actual women, biological females, would win a medal? I mean, literally, other than probably equestrian yeah. and shooting, maybe, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. There would be no women medalists. That's why the, the separation occurs. And by the way, Pierce, what I focus on is I coach Little League sports. I've got three boys. If I showed up for 12-year-old soccer uh, and I had a 16-year-old kid on my team, every parent would say, no, this is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. Can't do it for baseball, football, basketball. We have all sorts of changes to regulations. You can't be trans age, right? Like, I couldn't suddenly decide that I'm going to be a Little Leaguer. That's why they ask for birth certificates so you can go try to win the Little League World Series. 
because otherwise people would cheat, you know? And if I suddenly said, I'm coaching, I'm about to head, as soon as I finish this interview, Pierce, uh, I'm going to go to seventh grade basketball and watch my 13-year-old son uh, participate. If, if suddenly one of the coaches came out on the uh, court, you know, 6'4", and said, hey, I'm trans age now. Right. Sure, I'm 33, but I feel 13. Everybody would think it was uh, ridiculous. Of uh, it, it, it's just the very essence of sport itself. Yeah. Okay, Ava, I'm looking at you frowning away here. Um, explain to me why this isn't just insane. That Leah Thomas, who, as we just heard, was not just the tallest boy in her college when she was competing as a biological male, but the, obviously the tallest girl as well. How can any of this be fair? I think, OK, so this is a really interesting topic for someone who is gender critical, because on this show before, we have discussed puberty blockers and whether children should be allowed access to them when they are 12, 13 mm -hmm. years of age. Now, boys develop when they are 12, 13. The second that they start to have testosterone, that is when they, they, they grow bigger, they have mm -hmm. a larger muscle mass than women. If you don't want to see trans women competing in women's sports, mm. then you're going to have to allow young children who do not feel, who are experiencing gender dysphoria, to have those drugs when they're younger. No, not at all. You are. In, in my estimation, otherwise... you do one of two things. It's very straightforward. This whole supposed insolvable problem is very straightforward. Trans women either compete against other trans women in an entirely new category, well, as, there are more and more of, as there are more and more of them competing, or they compete against their biological sex mm -hmm. because that is the biology they've been born with. Tell me why that's not fair. I don't think it's fair that people who've experienced gender dysphoria when they're growing up and don't feel that they are in the right body should not be allowed to compete in sports. And if you're going to take away oh, their why rights... Why don't you care? Look, you, you to... love... You go on about women's rights, and a lot of the time I agree with you. I want women to enjoy utter fairness and equality. I think how this can, is fair. How can you possibly sign up to something that is so grotesquely unfair and unequal because Leah to Thomas, women's rights. Because Leah Thomas didn't wake up one morning and suddenly decide, I'm going to be able to win in the women's category, so I'm going to That's switch. exactly what she's no, that's doing. Not, that's not what happened. That's what she's doing. Leah Thomas, it, she, is, she is a woman, and so she is competing as a woman. She's a trans woman. She is a woman. She's a trans woman. We can go back and forth on She's this. a trans woman born with a biological male body, which gives her an immediate massive advantage so, over women who weren't. So why aren't other members of her team happy that they're finally winning and qualifying for all of the things that they never qualified because before. they can all see that it's unfair. Is it not a little bit of jealousy? No. It's just they know that at some stage, Leah Thomas is going to probably win the Olympic gold medal. Oh, no. That and would be awful for America. Yeah, that would be, be terrible. It would be, here's why it's terrible. The United States women's uh, soccer team, let's call it soccer for the benefit of this discussion, because they call themselves that, were number one in the world, the best women's soccer players on the planet, mm -hmm. and they got beaten, I think it was 8-1, by the Dallas under-15 boys team. Mm -hmm. Right? That is the point, mm -hmm. is that it wasn't that the women's team weren't great as a woman's team at soccer. Mm -hmm. It's that put them against a bunch of kids who are male with male physiology, mm -hmm. they got hammered. OK. That's why we separate the sexes. So what do we say about trans women, then? Do we just say they're not allowed to play sport ever? Are I they... just told you no, what no, we do. No, because... They compete against their biological sex, which is perfectly reasonable and fair. That's not reasonable. It's perfectly reasonable. That's not by the way, solves the problem of, the, of the dressing room too and who gets naked about, with let's who. Let's talk about all of those teenage years where they would have been seeking medical treatment and they weren't allowed access to it. Now, that's happening in the UK, and it's happening very much so in the US. Mm. People aren't being denied medical treatment when they would like to have it. All right. Now, when they get to of age, you don't let them play sport. You and I are going to come back to this when someone like Leah Thomas wins an Olympic gold, depriving a woman of winning Olympic gold. She is a woman. And you're going to finally say, Piers, you were right all along.